Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm Juliana and in today's video we are going to do the first wrap up of the year, the wrap up of January 2023. So, I'm going to start to talk about the books that I read throughout January, the books that I'm currently reading and then I'm, I'm going to talk about the movies and series that I watched through the month of January. So beginning with the books that I read. I read Salome by Oscar Wilde. This was a play and I have a video for this book already uploaded in my channel so if you want to please go check it out uh, it's a video with spoilers because this play is short it embodies a story of the bible in here where a, uh, well the main characters are a king the king of judea of judea Salome, the princess, the, step, the stepdaughter of the king and the prophet, Yochanan. It is a tragedy because people die at the end of this play. And is, what I can say is that I have to reread this play. And this, in my edition, in this Portuguese edition, it has a preface. And it was the preface that in some way helped me in some way no in every way helped me a lot to understand the meaning of this play and the behind um, subtleties that uh, Oscar Wilde put in his text so later I'm going to talk about this again because I saw a movie of this play but let, that's for later so Salome then I read The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is a classic, a modern classic. And it's a story that I also made a video about it. So if you want to go check it out, please do so. Um, what I can say is that I went for to this reading with with big expectations and they came out a bit frustrated because I was expecting that Gatsby would be the main character of the book and that is not what we find in this book and so we are presented to Nick Nick is our narrator Nick is a good fella. He's a man of 29 years old when we met him. And he comes from a family that lost all her money, so he's poor. And... Well... What Nick doesn't know, we don't know as well. Because we are seeing the story through the perspective of Nick. And so, although the book is called The Great Gatsby, we little find out about the story life of Gatsby himself. So, for that reason, I was a bit frustrated, but after I talked about with some people uh, about my experience with, with this book, I realized that, well, the interesting thing about this book is that precisely because Gatsby is not the main character. That's why this book is so interesting. For that exact, exact reason. So I came around in my opinion, but I made um, a resolution because I also saw the film ad adaptations, or at least two of them, that I'm going to talk about later. But um, I feel that I missed so many details, so many 
quotable phrases of this book that I think I'm going to endeavor rereading this book but in English so I have to buy this book again but an English edition uh, and I'm going to read it or reread it in English in his original language so that perhaps I can have a more I well I have to be with more attention as well so but yeah I want to do that so here we go I also read Burning Bright by John Steinbeck this is um, how is it called a story something like um, a play in a story form something like that uh, and so it's a new concept Steinbeck himself in the preface tells that perhaps he is the first person doing it and I really enjoyed it I also have a video about it so if you're curious about this format and about this story please go check it out I'm not going to elongate a lot about the story because I have videos all about these books so it doesn't make sense for me to be here and develop again about the story so if you're interested about any of these books please go and uh, search for the books in my channel and you will find them and this story in a basic in one word is love love rules and I uh, yeah I think that's the point, the main point of this play and I have to say that I also really enjoyed it uh, it's a quick read so if you're not if you don't want to endeavor in big books you have here a good story in a short format so there you go and then I also read Nausea by Jean Paul Sartre I also have a video about it I really like to make to make that video I think I I was able to deliver everything that I wanted so this this book so please go watch it yeah that was I, what I was trying to say but um, this book as the title says is about Nausea is about uh, um, feeling that a man has sometimes during his day-to-day -day that he can't really explain what it is, why it's happened, why it's happened um, and it's a feeling that accompanies him throughout the story. This is a very slow story so nothing major will happen in here so don't come up to this book expecting big action that's not what you're going to find this is a slow burn it's very ideological with very philosophical not terms but concepts so a really reflexive book that will make you think so I really advise you to if you're not a very philosophy reader if you and if you like mu uh, mu much more uh, fiction I think if you start in here you will have both and it will be an entryway for you in the philo philosophy world so there you go Okay, now about the books that I'm currently reading. So, you are bored now, but I have to show you. Oh, I have to say that most of the, most, let me see. Yeah, the, the three of the books that I show you 
were finishing my project for 12 books for 12 months of 2022 so there were delays and I'm still one to go from last year the challenge of last year and I'm talking about Pudenbrook so I'm here let me see I'm here I have roughly 100 pages to go still I know don't kill me but I really do have to finish I'm hoping to finishing it this week um, and perhaps having a video this weekend about this book and finishing the project of last year finally so let's hope for that and yeah so I'm reading Budenbrook I'm reading War and Peace I have this English edition with me this chunk of a book that I divided in chapters and as you can see I'm here so I read really few pages I read not even 30 pages but I saw that um, a Portuguese publisher was uh, publishing um, edition in two volumes of War and Peace in Portuguese and so I couldn't resist and I bought the first volume and I think this weekend, this upcoming weekend, I'm going to buy the second volume so I'm thinking of reading in turns so I'm going to read in Portuguese and then I'm going to reread in English because I want to read this book in a slow pace I don't have any rush to finishing it and it's a way for me to practice my English um, develop, develop my vocabulary and so I want to take this very very slow I don't have a schedule well I was supposed to be reading this together with Christian Assunção of This is a Brazilian Booktuber but I figured out that I wasn't going to be able to do that and with this idea of reading in Portuguese and English at the same time that's going to take me the double of time the double of the time the... how do you say it? The double, the double, how do you say, I don't know, time turns to x2 to read it <laughs> and yeah, there we go, I don't know when I'm going to finishing it, to finish it, but uh, I'm not in a rush, so that's a, a little project that I have for myself then I'm reading Angelo by Gian Giono this is a um, um, book that will present us one of the main characters of the horseman in the roof or on the roof now I don't know let me see here on the roof, right yeah, because that book that's the book that I'm going to read next when I finishing when I finish it this um, this one because I'm commemorating the month of uh, St. Valentine so February uh, reading a romance in this case too but it's a continuation so this year is like um, a draft of Gian Giono for the horseman on the roof I don't have it here with me I think it's in the other room so but I, you are going to see it later so there you go and then I'm also reading Swan's Way by Marcel Proust this is the, um, so it's from that saga of books 
In Search of Lost Time. There are seven volumes, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm reading the first one. I'm still in, in the introduction, so um, I'm not really in the book exactly. And this is a project that is also um, a project to I don't know how many years because I'm going I'm going to try to read them in sequence but I'm not in a rush I'm going to read it very slowly and I don't know when I'm going to finish so but well I suppose that when I finish one book I'm going to come here and record the video talking about that book and post it on my channel so you have to wait and see okay so now about the movies i only saw movies i didn't see any series this january so and the movies that i saw were uh, about the books that i read i have a letterbox but i don't really know how to handle it i don't get the the settings or how you share things or how you see the movies that other people are seeing if anyone knows how to use letterbox please let me know and i have to put their movies that i saw but i don't know if that has dates it's i don't i don't understand anything about letterbox but i have my link in the box description but please, if you know how to use letterbox and how can I see other people's letterbox? Only through the link I can search in the app? Like, I don't know, please let me know. <laughs> Help me. And so, I wanted to see the movies to talk about in the videos, but I didn't... The timing wasn't right, so I saw these movies to the end of the month only. Um, and so, I saw two film adaptations from The Great Gatsby. The first one was a film adaptation of 1974. And so, I'm going to try and put an image in here and you can see the cast of this movie so we have robert bradford as jay gatsby we have where he is sam waters waterstone as nick carraway we have mia farrow as daisy bushman or oh, buchanan i'm sorry <laughs> Buchanan. We have Karen Black as Myrtle Wilson. Louise Shields as Jordan Baker. Uh, Scott Wilson as George Wilson. And Bruce Dern as Tom Buchanan. So, this movie. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very faithful, I would say, to the book. Of course, it has some details that aren't completely according to the book, but that's normal in any movie. But I really enjoyed it. And then I saw The Great Gatsby film adaptation of 2013, 2013 where we have Leonardo DiCaprio as Jay Gatsby, Toby Maguire as Nick Carraway, Carrie Mulligan as Daisy Buchanan, Joel Etherton as Tom Buchanan, Elizabeth Debicki as Jordan Baker, and Isla Fisher as Myrtle Wilson. And more, let me see. Oh, and Jason Clark as George B. Wilson. And so, from these two movies, I have to say that I enjoy them both in for different reasons. 
So in, in these both film adaptations, we have the directors extracting from the book phrases and quotes that for me were really significant because I posted in my book some phrases that stayed with me because I thought they were so clever or funny or I never thought that way before, something like that. And, and I thought that it was very interesting and very respectful from the directors to make that choice. But the funny thing is, in the film adaptation of 74, we have a cho uh, chosen phrases that um, occur in the movie, so that appear in the movie. And then in the film adaptation of uh, 2013, we have other choices. So it's funny how in two movies we have um, not all in one, you know what I mean? That's why I said in the beginning that these film adaptations complement each other. And I think you should see the two of them because the first one is more, how can I say it? More warm, more slow, more things happen in their own way, but they are well, it's, it's more, I think, because of the time that we are speaking, 74, you know, maybe the budget for the movie wasn't that too much. I don't know, I have no idea, but, um, but the movie is very slow pace, slow pace, but not, but in a good way. We, you are not going to be bored. We have a contrast then with the film adaptation of 2013 where we have everything everything is grand everything is spectacular we have a lot the use of special effects we see that in the movie and it's really obvious but that's the point they are not trying to um, hide that so that is part of the movie. Um, the parties are, I don't know, five times bigger than the movie of 74, but I think that's understandable. The, I suppose the um, technology for that and also maybe the investment in the movie was other, was different. So, but in any case, I have to say that I love the cast in both of the film adaptations, but I have to say that for some reason I preferred uh, Robert Redford and Sam Waterston as our main characters. So Robert Redford as Jay Gatsby and Sam Watterson as Nick Carraway. I don't know how to explain it, but I thought that the, um, they were more real. You know what I mean? I believe them more. Because, well, the film of 2013 it has a little twist in the beginning where Nick is in um, a recovery hospital because he turned uh, Hulk recovering for a alcoholism. He is telling his story to the doctor and the doctor uh, says to him, why don't you write if it's painful to you to speak about it? And so he becomes he, he, become, he begins writing the story of, Gats, of Gatsby and everything that passed. And in the book and in the film adaptation of 74, we don't have that. So in a way, that's interesting. We have that twist there. That's something different. 
a different perspective. I enjoy that. But throughout the movie, I don't know. I, I think the portrayal of Jay Gatsby and Nick were more real, more crude, more tangible in the 74 adaptation, you know? I'm going to be without light, so let's wrap it up. So I, how, as I was saying, uh, I really advise you to watch the two adaptations. I think you, you will bring something from the both of them in different aspects. And you have parts of the story in one film and parts, other parts of the story in another. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, if you see then, let me know what you thought about the cast, which one you enjoyed more. And yeah, let me know. And so, the last movie that I saw was Salome, directed by Al Pacino. Uh, from 2013 as well and I have to say that it's really different to read a play in the paper where you see someone speaks and says that then another per person speaks and says that and in the play in the discourse day to day that doesn't happen right sometimes we talk to uh, in top of each other and so seeing that portrayal um, alive is so different. Um, so, so we have Salome being portrayed by Jesse, Jessica Chastain, King Herod being portrayed by Al Pacino, Hirudias being portrayed by Roxanne Hart. John de Baptiste being portrayed by Kevin Henderson. The young Syrian, so the captain, being portrayed by Philip Rice Shodhari. And then we have the young Syrian, there is a confusion here, by Joe Rosetto. Then we have Nazarene by Jack St Stalin. Stahelin, I don't know how to say it. And then others. But it's really different to read a play and watch a play. It's totally different. And I really advise you if you read a play of any kind and if you have the opportunity to see it in stage or in movies, or in seeing it being portrayed, I really advise you to do so, because the experience and the concept that you have from the story is completely different. And I really, really enjoyed seeing it. It's not too long, it's like one hour and 20, um, and is wonderful. I loved everyone, and they were, in more modern clothes so it wasn't so much um, faithful to the letter you know it was more the f they were faithful to the written play but not so much to the endometary so go go see it you will love it after you read it so so yeah, that's it. This is my January wrap up. I was with some trouble in this video talking in English. Some words and some expressions weren't exactly um, easy to catch. So I hope you forgive me. I'm going to try edit it, edit this the best I can, so it doesn't be so noticeable. But that's it. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. 
leave a like, it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And before you go, I just want to ask you, so if you please could use the links that I put down below for Amazon. I put down below links for every book that I talk about in here for Amazon Spain and Amazon UK. And it's a way for you to help me because they are affiliate links. So I earn a small commission if you buy through those links. And if you do so, you don't change anything at all of your purchase. The value of your purchase is just that when you do so, I receive a small commission. That's all. And it's a way for you to help me to buy more books because I spend my money in books. And it's a way for you to help me bring more books to the channel. So if you please could, could use them, I'll be really thankful. And if you are a Portuguese viewer, I also have links for Wook and Bertrand that you can use. And they I can't refer to the book specifically, but I have the general link of the site and you then can go and choose any book at your choice or anything at all and I receive a small commission. Oh, something I didn't say about Amazon. You don't have to buy books. You you can buy anything you want, anything in this world. Food, dog food, um, tissues like computers, anything from anything at all. I have the general link down below. If you go down below, you go see Amazon Spain um, and the link or Amazon UK and the link and you can use those links to buy anything you want and through those links I receive a small commission so thank you so much if you do so I really appreciate it and well that's it I see you on the next one bye